everyone and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be speaking about my all-time favorite books. Now, I've been putting off this video for a really long time just because I feel like there's a lot of pressure associated with making an official list of my favorite books. I'm so terrified that I'm like forgetting a book or I'm about to read a book that's going to become my favorite book of all time and it's not going to be on the list and this video is going to represent my favorites forever and ever and ever and I won't be able to change it. But I do want to share with you guys my favorite books, so we're just going to make this video and if I decide later that I want to update it, I'm going to do that later. <laughs> now that I'm back in Australia and I have all of my books with me, I figured there's no excuses. I should get onto it and film this video so I can finally share my absolute favorites with you guys. I will also note that as soon as I started filming, Ginger decided to come and sit on my lap and she's purring and she's adorable and I don't have the heart to move her <laughs> and I'm really really worried that the purring is going to sound really noisy on the audio so if you can hear noisy purring or bell jingling there is a cat sitting on me and she's very cute you know what I'm actually going to video it so you guys can see what she's doing okay so this is her right now she is asleep on me she's very very cute and I don't have the heart to move her so she's staying <laughs> Also, another warning, there are a lot of books here, and I mean a lot. I don't actually know the official number, I think it's something like 20 books. I'm gonna try and breeze through them really, really quickly, so this video isn't like half an hour long, but it's probably gonna be a really long video, just like my favorite movies video was a really long video, because I do wanna make a comprehensive list, and I do wanna share everything that I love with you guys. All of these books are like my five star books, books that I love, books that I reread, books that have in some way changed me as a human being, those types of books. Um, there's a lot more books that I really, really like and a lot more books that I really enjoyed and I like regard them really, really highly, but they just didn't quite make the cut to this list. Um, I've done a lot of reading and there's so many more books that I could add to this, so I may one day make a part two. And there are so many books here, but I can't add any more. And really, we should just get into the video because it's going to be a long video. The very first book is absolutely no surprise to anyone here. Everyone knew this was gonna be the first one. It is Harry Potter. I have talked about this book a million times on this channel. Everyone knows it's my favorite. My only tattoo is a Harry Potter tattoo. I have read this book over 20 times. I've read all of the books a million times. I know everything about this series and I love it. This was the book that got me into reading. This book helped me through a number of difficult times in my life. This book is the reason I want to be an author and I want to be a writer. And this is the book that made me love reading. This book, it was so, so influential to me. Hermione was me when I was a child. And <laughs> I just love this book. Two is The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter. You guys are going to notice a pretty distinct trend with this video. Um, if you've watched my channel for a long time, there's going to be a lot of books that you have seen before. But as I said, we have a lot of books to talk about today. So don't worry, I am actually going to bring up new ones as well. I love Angela Carter. She is like just the most amazing person. She is so talented. She is just an absolute literary genius. She's just my favorite person in the world. And I love this book. It was written in 1967 and it is a gothic novel about a young girl named Melanie whose parents suddenly die in a tragical accident. Um, and she has to go live with her uncle in a creepy, gothic, terrifying bookshop in London. The other book I love by Angela Carter is The Bloody Chamber. I read this recently, actually, and it is a collection of fairy tales that she has rewritten. The way she wrote these fairy tales was so spectacular. And the title of fairy tale, The Bloody Chamber, which is based off of Bluebeard, was so disturbing in this book. I was terrified reading it, but it's just an absolutely brilliant retake on fairy tales. If you love fairy tales and gothic lit and all that kind of stuff, I so recommend The Bloody Chamber. And yeah, Angela Carter, I love her. She's one of my favorite authors. I would read anything by her. She's just absolutely amazing. This one is The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Haruki Murakami and Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. I love both of these books very, very, very much. If I had to pick a favorite, I'd probably say The Wind Up Bird Chronicle, just because I read it like the first week we moved to Japan and it was the summertime and The Wind Up Bird Chronicle was set in the summertime as well. And the imagery was just so evocative and immersive and 
just it spoke to me so so much the wind up bird chronicle is like super creepy and disturbing in places so for that reason it like really stuck with me for a while and it kind of screwed with my head but apart from that I love the book Murakami is such a talented writer and he's one of my favorite writers of all time basically in that book there is a I think he's a paralegal it's been a while since I read it. He's a paralegal and basically he doesn't have a job. He recently quit, so he's unemployed. His cat goes missing and essentially a lot of weird stuff starts happening after that. It's a really interesting book. It's magical realism and it's incredibly long. I think it's like 500 and something pages. I'll put the number of pages right here. And then I also love Norwegian Wood, which is like Murakami's most famous novel. There are parts of it that are problematic, but it's beautifully written. And if you're not so keen on magical realism, try out this book. It's a little more realistic in the way the story is told. Um, but this is like the book that everyone's read by Murakami. Oh, sorry, Norwegian Wood is about a man who's like remembering his life and the time when he was an undergrad at university in the 60s. Um, it basically follows around his experience of like his first love and the tragedy that he went through and like all of this stuff. A bit like a coming of age story, but it's just brilliant, brilliant book. I love this as well very, very much. <laughs> the fourth one is basically just the entirety of Virginia Woolf's works. And I have four books to speak about for her. Um, the first one is Mrs. Dalloway. This is a wonderful book that I read in my first year of university. It is just a freaking masterpiece. I love it so much. It is stream of consciousness. The entire thing is set in one day. It is like high modernism. So it's like a really, really intricate read. And the whole thing, all of it, all 200-ish pages, there are no chapters in this book. It's just one wall of text. The next one is To the Lighthouse. I love this because the structure is just amazing. It is a Kunzel Roman, I've so butchered that, I'm so sorry, I have no idea how to pronounce that. Kunzel Roman, basically it's the artist's coming of age story and it's, it's just this book has the most amazing structure in it. There's this whole section in the middle where like time doesn't exist and it's just, just such an interesting book. The next one, sorry, I'm breezing through these because if I intricately describe all of them, we're gonna be here for hours. The next one is Orlando. This is a biography about a real person. It's not, it's entirely fictional, but basically it's a story about a young man who lives for hundreds and hundreds of years. Do you mind? about a young man who lives for hundreds and hundreds of years and also changes gender so he becomes she. The book was basically a love letter to Vita Sackville West and it was so ahead of its time and I just love this book very 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 much. The last one I don't even have a physical copy of but it is A Room of One's Own. I've also spoken about this book a lot. It's not a novel but it's actually an extended essay and basically it's Wolf's take on gender and writing and what a person needs to become a writer essentially financial autonomy and privilege and all this kind of stuff. The book is a little bit flawed because it only really examines one very specific group of people, but it is beautifully written. Honestly, I've never read a non-fiction like, book or thing that is so beautifully written as this. I love it so very much. In my opinion, Virginia Woolf is the most talented writer who has ever lived. She's just like insanely good and I love all of her work and basically I just want to read everything she's ever written. The next one is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I have already spoken about this book so so very much. Um, I'm not going to speak about it too much today because I have like a whole video on Frankenstein. Everyone pretty much knows the story of Frankenstein, the mad scientist. Dr. Victor Frankenstein makes a creature who doesn't have a name, um, makes a creature from nothing and basically everything goes wrong. This is a beautifully told story and Mary Shelley wrote this when she was a teenager, which is absolutely amazing. I love her. She's like my idol. It is beautifully written. There's a lot of like natural imagery, um, a lot of themes surrounding industrialization versus nature versus God versus science. It's just really really wonderfully written. Number six is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. 
This is a more recent book. This book won the 2015 Pulitzer Prize and there are so many reasons why this book won. It is just the most amazing story. The book has two different protagonists. The first one, Marie Law, I think is how you say her name, is a little girl living in France. She's blind. The second protagonist is Werner. He is an orphan boy growing up in Germany, and it's basically their experiences of World War II. Um, it flips between both of their perspectives. The book is very, very fragmented. It has very short chapters. Um, and it's also non-chronological, so it goes back and forth between the snippets of their stories and it's just so intricately woven. The themes that are explored in this book are just amazing. I love it so much. It is a wonderful book. The next one is Kazuo Ishiguro's Never Let Me Go. I read this book in high school and I was so blown away by it. I absolutely bawled my eyes out. For this one, I can't really tell you very much about the plot. If you're interested in reading it, please do not go and look up the plot too much. There's just a really, really interesting mystery to this story. And if you look up too much about the plot, you'll ruin it for yourself. So just, just do yourself a favor and go into this book knowing pretty much nothing. Essentially, it's about a woman named Kathy H. She's looking back on her life and her experiences of growing up in a boarding school. And there's all of this mystery surrounding her experiences, basically it's not what you think. This isn't a normal boarding school story. It's a book that really, really considers morality and what human beings should do and what they shouldn't do. And it's just such an interesting story. Ishiguro is one of my favorite writers. He also wrote The Buried Giant, which I read recently, and I really enjoyed that book. That's basically like a literary fantasy. Pre-medieval, so think like King Arthur, Knights of the Round Table, that sort of stuff. It's a really, really good book. It's very different to Never Let Me Go, but I love both of these very, very much. Oh, and not to mention Kazuo Ishiguro recently won the Nobel Prize for Literature. I think it was last year. Yeah, last year. But anyway, Never Let Me Go is my favorite novel by him. This is a brilliant book. Okay, the next one is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I read this when I was in year 12 in my senior year of high school. I still love this book so very much. If you don't know anything about The Bell Jar, it's basically about a young woman living in New York in the 50s. She's doing an internship in a magazine. And despite having everything in her life being perfect, she still doesn't feel happy. It's a really, really interesting look at mental health, especially at the mental health of a young woman in the 50s. The actual bell jar from the title of the story is actually a symbol for depression and how depression feels like. This book is really, really autobiographical. The names have been changed, but it's basically based off of her own life and what happened to her. So if you're interested in Sylvia Plath, definitely check out the bell jar. Um, I have flowers drying in here. <laughs> I can't even remember where these flowers are from. I think they're from my university graduation. Yeah, anyway, beautiful book. I love this book. The next one is a play and it is A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen. This is my favorite play. I also read it when I was near 12. Basically it's set in the late 1800s and it's about a young woman who's married and the social expectations that are placed on her and the fact that she's supposed to perform the role of a mother and she's supposed to perform the role of the housewife and like all of this stuff and how she feels trapped in the dollhouse of her life. And basically it just, it really looks into like the domestic dynamic of her family and, and what it means to perform the roles we're supposed to fill. It's about what it means to be a human being first. We are human beings first before we are these roles that we play in society. And I just think that concept's really important and I really, really believe in that as well, that before anything else, you're a human being before being you know, a mother or a father before being a man or a woman before being this, that or the other. You are a human being first. You are a person first. You have feelings and wants and dreams and aspirations first before having to fulfill a role that society has placed for you. I just really like that and I love this play so much. The next two are some of my favorite kids books of all time and they are Howl's Moving Castle and the Charmed Life series by Diana Wynne-Jones. I love Diana Wynne-Jones so much. She's a brilliant author. She's so, so very talented. I started reading Charmed Life 
when I finished Harry Potter. So when I was probably about 11 or 12 and I finished the last Harry Potter book. This is about a young witch and her little brother. They go off to live with this extravagant man named Christo Mancini. Um, I always mentally pronounced his name as Christo Mancini and that's like stuck with me my whole life just saying it wrong. But yeah, this is just a brilliant, beautiful kids book. The way magic works in Diana Wynne Jones's books is just really, really cool and interesting. And despite it being a kids book, the plot is so intricate. I'm a big believer that you don't have to dumb down plots for kids, you just have to write to your audience. Yeah, brilliant book. And then also House Within Castle. You guys know that House Within Castle is my favorite Ghibli movie. Um, the movie is based off of this book. Now there are some differences between the book and the film, but basically it's the same. Despite being a kid's book, this is a brilliant read. It's really well written and it is one of my favorite books ever. Just the story is so good and it's so believable and it's so realistic. Like she makes really, really good believable characters and um, if you want an easier read, if you want a really, really quick read and you like Studio Ghibli, I definitely recommend reading House Within Castle. Um, Hello, editing Christy here. So my camera battery just died even though it was fully charged before I started. Um, because it's a really old battery, it just takes hours and hours to recharge and on this day I didn't have time to wait. So I'm really sorry, but I'm gonna have to zip in here and just finish the end of this video. Really quickly, I'm just gonna talk about the last few books I love. My favorite book of poems is this one by T.S. Eliot. I adore The Wasteland, but my favorite poem of all time is The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. Both of those poems are in this book and it's just a really good short compilation of T.S. Eliot's poems. Two of my favorite gothic novels are Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte and A Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I spoke about them at length in my gothic reads video so if you guys want to hear more about those two books I will link that video in the description below. And then finally because I'm a complete nerd I wanted to share with you my favorite textbooks as well. Here we have the Cambridge Companion to Fantasy Literature, an anthology of classical myth, and the literary theory handbook. Also I love Suzanne Gubar and Sandra Gilbert's The Mad Woman in the Attic. These have all been essential to my research at some point or another. They're really, really well written texts. They're informative without being dry. They're really interesting and I learned so much from reading them. And yeah, that's it. I will leave it there. I have so many more books that I wanted to talk about, but I'll probably just stick with those. Please let me know about any of your favorite books. I would love to hear any recommendations that you have. The red light is already flashing on my DSLR. So in case it cuts out, I'm gonna say thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a lovely day. Bye-bye.